of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, and verse 37 through 40. 1 Samuel, Old Testament, look at the 30th, 17th chapter. Oh, mercy. Hey, we're, I'm smudged. These are bad. Please clean these up for me. 17th chapter, 1 Samuel's, uh, 1 Samuel, look at, clean up, please. Look at verse um, 37. All right, if I stand back, I can see it. I'm reading this from the Amplified Bible, and it's cutting through the middle of a story, but you'll, you'll get the part I want to talk about. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hands of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a brazen helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and, tie, and tried to walk around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in this, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the water, from the stream, put them in his pouch of his shepherd's bag and with his sling in his hand, approach the Philistine, and all the people said, amen. amen. Look at somebody say, your armor must fit. Your armor must fit. I'm going to lead into my story with a narrative of thought. Growing up as kids, we were, most of us were admiring our parents, especially little girls or little boys with their father. And to see the long shoes sitting by the door or in the room somewhere, we wanted to seem to know what it felt like to put our little feet down in those shoes. And so clunk, clunk, clunk around the house we go, sliding in these shoes with nowhere to go. But just to have them on was amazing to feel, make us feel like we were grown. Because I got on grown folk shoes. But dad would come in and quickly admire us and laugh as a father, oh wow, my child got the shoes on their feet. But would bring me quickly to the educational point that you don't know what it means to walk in these shoes. These shoes are made for walking. Listen, but the thought of just being in the shoes made me feel like I was in charge. I felt like I was going somewhere. And my father was in construction, so we had a chance to put on construction boots. Made you even feel even stronger walking around with them on. But the obvious reality is that the shoes didn't fit and the boots didn't fit. They belonged to him. Some things you try to walk in just don't fit. But God has your perfect size of stilettos. I'm sorry, something else. Here's your perfect size of shoes that you admire and they fit your feet properly. David here was a young man, some, were, some said he was about 15 years young. According to 1 Samuel 16, in the same context of chapter, a, few, a chapter back, David has been chosen to be next in line to be the king, but was going on a journey to get to his kingship. He, like most of us, had big aspirations and ideas to do something great for God. David being a Benjaminite, and we'll get to that later, but he had been chosen by God, and he was the youngest, and I believe the littlest in his family, but yet God had chose him. Just because you're the youngest don't mean that God can't use you. Just because you're the smallest doesn't mean that God can't use you. Just make sure your armor fits. Make sure your armor fits. When God chooses, he does not choose like man. God chooses very oddly. Paul helps us in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians first chapter, verse 27 to 29. I'll paraphrase through it. But God has chosen, 1 Corinthians first chapter, verse 27 to 29. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. 
and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things which that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. God chooses to upset people, to let them know that if it's being done, it surely is not being done by the person I chose. Weak things, foolish things, base things, low things, things that nobody wants. But when God chooses, he knows what's on the inside. And he used that person so no flesh should glory in his sight. So anytime you see someone trying to take God's glory, tell them, oh, you couldn't have done that on your own. If we're not for God, you couldn't do nothing, but you can do all things through Christ that gives you strength. Your armor must, must fit. God has chosen the most unlikely person in David and sometimes, most times, in you and I. It's the unlikely Davids that God can use to fight giants. To fight giants. It's the most unlikely sister David <laughs> that God can use to fight giants. Because he was small in comparison to the giant, God wanted to use him to defeat the giant. Have you ever, ever been in a situation where your problems were huger than you? You were seemingly inadequate to deal with them. Insufficient, 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 and also in, unelegant to deal with them. Simply, you were just too small. You could not handle it. Insufficiency. You had no way you were going to beat this. But David here shows us and assures us in verse 37 that God had delivered him once before. He will do it again. He had experience with God in long hours of solitude out keeping his father's sheep. Time had come for God to move him up to something bigger and greater. But he had to wear the right armor. Noble work he had in tending the sheep, but God was there helping him watch over that flock of, Je of Jesse. We can both learn from David, who appeared before the giant, when we ourselves are sometimes alone in giant situations, giant jobs we have to con conquer, uh, come over, overcome, watching and sleepless nights with God building our character to prepare us for the next step. When your armor doesn't fit, that's a good thing because you can learn some things from that. The lesson here that David is going to teach us as we go is that you have to take it off if it don't fit. And don't let anyone put it on you if it doesn't fit. Him being a Benjaminite, he understood the courage that they had as Benjaminites according to Genesis 49 and 27. He said, Benjamin, he says, is a, is a ravenish wolf. In the morning, he devours his prey, and at night, he divides the spoil. So it's the heart of a champion with inside of you and inside of me. Little and small as you are, but I tell you, brother, don't roll up on her. You might find you didn't got yourself a whole to a little pit bull, and you think you're going to run over on her just because she's looking real mousy. Dad has already taught her, kick low, kick low, kick low. Go for all the weak points in the throat, in the throat, in the throat. Whatever you do, don't back down. Get the first punch in. Don't talk about the fight in the fight. I know Chris, I know Chris, I know. Don't, get, don't stand up there just uh, in a minute, in a minute. No, as soon as they get the talking, as soon as that devil get the talking, kick low, kick low, kick low. Go for the throat, for the throat, for the throat. And if he grabs you, don't try to struggle. Just reach for the eyes, the eyes, the eyes. But victory is inside of the champion who you are. Many of you can attest when your back was against the wall. You were at a place where you had nowhere to go, but your mind had told you, there's only but two people coming out of this, and I would be the one coming out of this. Benjaminites, Benjaminites, they, they, were, they were very unique people, small, this tribe of, the, of, of, um, of, of, of Israel's, of, of Jacob's sons, smallest tribe, the Benjaminites, there they were, of the tribe of Benjamin, they were very skilled, so also was the Benjaminite, and they were people who knew how to throw rocks, throw rocks and sling shots, they were very uh, crafty and very precise in throwing rocks with the, with the rag. David, as a child, by nature, understood the power of God, and he's seen how God would work in his life. 
Saul should have stopped right there when David says, God told me to go ahead. The Lord told me to go ahead and fight this giant. But in verse 38 of this 17th chapter, where the story begins to open up, he says to David, Saul, he says, go and may the Lord be with you. Stop. That's enough right there. Then Saul had his own military clothing and he put it on David. He put a brazen helmet on his head and he put, a, he put his armor on him and David strapped on the sword over the military clothing. And the Bible says he tried to walk and he couldn't walk. I'm talking to somebody right now. You've been trying to live this Christian life on someone else's testimony. But you got to live it on your own. You can't live it on house unless you've gone through the trials I've gone through. But you'll live it on your own. If not, you'll be trying to walk a long time. And may I say, I think I can say, no, I won't say. Uh, don't be deceived by an exterior opinion of what you think people got. And you go out and get what they got. And what they got, got them and got you too. Because they don't have what you think they have. Oh, I told you I shouldn't have said it. But you're trying to appeal to be like somebody else and don't know they ain't even sleeping at night. Worried about somebody knocking on the door to get the stuff that they ain't got. Yes, I can't walk in this. I can't walk in that. I can't do that. Often we try, but we cannot succeed in the strength of someone else's trust and faith. People can amp you up on their faith. Trust God, go get it, go by faith, but you don't have that grace. No faith to walk in that. And it's good to have your faith built, but if that's not your measure of faith, anyone push you into that? Strengthen to trust in the Lord. What's on your head? He put this, this, this helmet, a brass on his head to keep him stable, but it, it, it could not keep him stable. He was off balance. So what's in your, I'm sorry, what's on, what's in, what's, what's on your head that's got you off balance, like wibble wobble? You don't know where you're going. Somebody has put something on you, just got you all off balance. And you can't balance yourself back in. David said to Saul, uh, uh, David, David said to Saul, I can't use this. I'm not used to these tools. It's not going to fit in what God has called me to do. So David took it off. He took it off. There are some things this morning, I believe, and you that are online, you got to take off. People have put things on you that just doesn't fit. You got to take it off. Um, illustration. Is that Jada over there? Jada, run up here, baby, real quick. Come up here. Come here. Uh, sit. Take, take the jacket off real quickly. Come on, Jada. Come, come, come. I got to get up here. Take it. Come on, baby. Uh, Sister David. Okay, turn that way. Face the audience. But somehow Saul felt that I'm going to help David out. So I'm going to put this on him. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish for you. What was Saul thinking that David is going to wear this? Saul is some almost 6'9", or whatever, whatever it's Saul. How taller than David? David here is small. This is hilarious enough. Then he gives him a sword. He gives him a helmet and puts all this on him and feels like he's helping him. Thank you, Jada. Thank you, Sid. You realize people will put things on you think they're helping you? And they ain't helping you at all. You didn't jack me up with something that's got me off balance. I can't even move. I was doing better without all your junk you put on me. I was making it all right. I wasn't where you're at, but I was doing pretty good. So David took it off. He said, I'm not wearing this. I need five people to say, I ain't wearing that. Whatever he said, whatever she said, whatever they said, tell that devil, I'm not wearing this. 
Some of you, as we grew up in very impoverished environments and very lowly means all our lives, you ain't going to make it. Ain't nobody in my family ain't ever bought a house. You ain't going to college. You ain't going to do it. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't. Well, I'm going to be the first to say I did because I'm not letting myself live my life wearing what you said I can't do it. As long as I'm breathing, there's still a chance. <laughs> Prophesy to somebody, say, there's still a chance, there's still a chance. As long as you have breath, there's still a chance. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. So he took it off. I'm not wearing this, I'm taking it off. People's opinion, their, dis their discussion, and their, uh, their, their words, uh, their, their thoughts, I'm taking it off. Don't let people mess you up. Talking all that talk and rah, rah, rah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't let people mess you up. You ain't gonna never be nothing because you may not be. I didn't say it, y'all preaching that. I'm not preaching that. Since the armor that didn't fit, David took his staff in his hand, subject says, he put it down to the river's water edge in the, in, the, in the whittle and got five smooth stones and puts them in his pouch and he goes down and he takes the sling, I like to call it a rock and a rag, and goes and approaches the giant. So here's my, 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 my come to in the story for this time around. David had already said that the Lord had delivered the, the, the lion, the, the, the lamb out of my, out of, I delivered, the Lord delivered me from the lion and the bear, and I took it out of the, the lion's mouth, right, by my hands. But now I'm facing a giant, a different strategy. Why, Clinton, didn't he just say, well, God, you did it once before with my hands, I'm going to do it again with my hands, I'm going out and fight this giant with my hands. The Lord said, no, a different strategy. Your hands are strong, and I taught you in Psalms 18 how to war. But this time, I'm going to have you understand that this one's going to be surely on me. Because the physical hands, I could wrestle to like get some strategy of victory. But now, i got to just step back and grab a rock <laughs> and trust that somehow this rock word is going to go to the right place. I need five people to say, I'm winding it up this morning. I'm going <laughs> to let this word flow. David released the rock, the rock goes center of the giant's head, hit him, knocked him down face forward, cuts the head off of the giant. But the strategy was so amazing to me that he had to go and get rocks and he had a rag. Because the Benjaminites, in their understanding of how their tribal position, they were able to sling. They were introductive to be able to throw with one hand or the other hand. It went out and David defeated this giant. The story of David and Goliath is so related to us today because it's about the battles that we face in everyday life. Huge giants. Our battles can be enormous as giants. Some of you sitting here this morning, I already know that you are dealing with a giant of a situation. And you're wondering, how is this going to work out, Pastor House? Make sure your armor fits. Tony Stark, Tony Stark, Tony, Tony Stark, listen. Everybody cannot put that suit on. But Roni, I think the guy was, when he saw Tony as friends, he said, look, I want to just fly one of those. I'm going to just get inside one. Tony said, it doesn't fit you. It's made for me. He said, but if I get in it, I believe I can take off. I believe it'll fit me. And of course, he stepped inside it. It fit. It was something that fit him in the capacity of his ability. He didn't know how to control it. At least he stepped into something that fit. Can you imagine stripping yourself of everything that did not fit? And step into something that does fit. I just need five people to say, a millionaire fits me. I can work in this. I know. I, everybody now, everybody. But I know, Lord, this fits good, this fits good on me. Okay, okay. I need somebody to say, debt free fits good on me. Debt free. I can, I can wear this for the rest of my life. I ain't got to go nowhere. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because somebody said, healing fits me. I can walk in this healing. I ain't got to catch COVID, Rovic, any other, uh, other. I can walk around feeling good all day. It fits me. And this is for you. 
Your neighbor saying, now praise is what I do. I'm just a praiser. No matter what, I just praise. I just bless God. Even when I'm sad, I'm praising. When I'm happy, I'm happier. It's just what I do. The enemy does not take my attitude, nor my joy, nor dictate my life by what he says. Because God has fitted me for this. Wear what fits you. Wear what fits you. Wear what fits you. If it doesn't fit, take it off. The subject here, and as I come to my closing, is David was learning the lesson how to totally depend on God. Say, I will, I will totally, totally depend, depend on God. On God. Now remind yourself you're facing a giant, an insurmountable force, and yet you're speaking of the faith that I got to trust God. I already have history with him that he's already helped me to deliver me from this overwhelming force. If you've not really been to the zoo or fought a literal lion or a bear, but the overwhelming force. When that dark cloud comes in of depression, of weary, of uncertainty, and it sets over your house, follows you down the hallway, out of the shower, into the kitchen, the enemy's talking through the cloud, well, you know, you ain't gonna make it this time. I don't know how, <sighs> ain't nobody calling you. And that anxiety begins to beat in your chest like, oh, Lord. And that, that, that temperature goes up of nervousness, like, Lord, I'm, I, I, your mouth gets dry, wondering, God, God, I know, you, I know, you, I know you're going to come through. And the devil said, no, he's not coming through. He's never came through yet. But you have to tell the devil, no, as long as I have dialogue, <laughs> I still got a chance <laughs> to come out of this. So as long as I'm talking to God, I still got a chance to get through this. If you keep pushing me, I'll talk a little louder and get a little stronger and get to that can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. God wants us to totally rely upon him, not on our armor of self-reliance. So what do you do when the armor doesn't fit? I told you, you take it off. Lose what you have to get what you need. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Lord, it's too big for me. Standing almost 10 feet tall. This armor they put on me is 125 pounds. I can't move, I can't walk. So I humble myself and say, I don't know what to do with this. Do not try to rely on your own strength. Your armor must fit, so therefore it must be tailored to you. Now, Tailoring is a unique thing because all of us have different shapes. Nothing wrong with that. Certain tailoring is too tight. And some fit proportionally where you enhance the garment. Y'all getting mad at me right now. Ooh. If it don't fit, If your girlfriend say, baby, listen, I love you. I'm beyond you. You, you, can't, you can't wear that. I promise you. No, don't put that. You're going to Jamaica? Well, listen, get a full. Don't get a two-piece. I don't want you down there to, well, I'm, I'm free out here. I know you're free, but somebody's watching. Listen. iPhone cameras are everywhere. Say, it must fit. Once you get it on, once you get tailored and you fit it, it must be tested. Because the enemy is going to come to see what you're wearing. Because you're looking too good to not be a target. You're walking around with a successful attitude. With $2 in your pocket. But you feel like you're going to be all right. In between a job, we're gonna start a business because I feel like I'm gonna be all right. Just went through a divorce, don't feel like I'm loved at all, raising these kids by myself, but guess what? I'm gonna be all right. The friends that I had, they left. The other friends that was with them, that brought them, that I brought to them, they took those friends and they left. So I feel like I'm gonna be all right. That's when you know what you're wearing is a, bi what's that, uh, uh, vibranium? Yes, that's that suit. What you're wearing, it's not being penetrated because God has tested you to know what it feels like to be low and to be high, to be in between 
man would ever stay. People saying you'll never make it, baby. Listen, I come this far by faith. <laughs> I'm gonna go the rest of the way by faith. I know I'm gonna make it. So the enemy is hitting with you and everything he got saying, why don't you fall? I'm not built to fall. I'm built to come up. What's in my life is not predicated up on things. It's predicated up on the armor that I put on. Amen, somebody. Amen. Lastly, the battle is not physical, but it's spiritual. David's literally was a physical conflict, but it moves over into a spiritual conflict. David was the type of Jesus Christ on and on, rejected by his brothers on and on. He had to fight the, the principalities of satanic power and render him powerless. So on and on. Now we are in likeness of David, but in the spiritual sense that we put on the armor. Here we go and we're finishing Ephesians 6. Finally, 6 and 10, be strong in the Lord and in the strength or power of his might. It's almost if, if I'm at the last leg of the race and the enemy knows he didn't stop you three quarters of the way and you're turning the corner. I think the section here just lean. Oh, come back up. You're turning the corner like I see the home stretch. I didn't made it this far and the devil didn't throw it everything he could and God allowed me to get three quarters of the way. I believe I can get to the end. Because I have the, okay, come on, lean this way. Uh, sit back up. I believe that God is turning the corner this morning. He's moving you on two wheels, on four wheels, but you're turning the corner because you have the right thing on. And the ability and the capacity within you ain't got nothing in it saying quit. You should have quit a long time ago, but now all you're saying is finally. After all that the devil has done, finally. After all that I've been through, finally. I'm down to the home stretch. Something happens when you get down to the home stretch. Some other energy kicks in and begin to become a dynamo. You begin to celebrate yourself before you cross the finish line. I need somebody to holler, finally. Finally, finally, finally. Be strong in the Lord. Power is might. Put all the whole arm of God. You may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against the authorities, against the cosmic power over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take under you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil days. And having done all to stand, stand firm. Stand therefore having your, 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 uh, having your, your for, being fortified, I'm sorry, being fastened on, fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and your shoes shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. But whatever you do, stand. Circumstances will take hold of you and I. They will come up against you and the devil will throw darts. Some things you ain't got to fight or listen to. Just put your shield up and tell the devil, that ain't for me, that ain't for me and that ain't for me and if it's don't if it gets past the shield make sure you keep a helmet on your head to cover your mind and your spirit don't let everybody talk to you and above all things make sure your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace say lord order my steps i'm always getting off the wrong road but if you order my steps i'll be where you want me to be the devil is throwing fiery flaming darts and arrows trying to hit the believer but you have the soul of the spirit which is the word of God so when all the battle is over you got your rag and your rock telling the devil you shouldn't have never came by my house because as for me and my house we're going to serve the Lord I have on my armor this morning I am fortified in Jesus I will not go down I will only go over in the name of the Lord and above all things make sure you have prayer in your arsenal praying in the spirit and praying always with great supplication unto the Lord. Everybody right now, touch your shoulder and make sure. Okay, you got it on. Praise God. Give God a praise. Your armor fits. Hold your hands up. Father, I bless you. I thank you for your grace that you've given us. 
weaponry and armory to stand in these evil days. Cover my mind, God, and a breastplate to cover my heart, my thoughts, reason, and emotions. Fortify me in this dark hour. I don't want to put on what man has suggested that will throw me off balance and I can't walk in that. But I want to put on your armor that's unimpenetrable. The enemy has tried to get through and he couldn't. So where my armor is lacking, build me up. Let me know what I left out this week so I can be fortified from sickness, from heartaches, from depression, from lack, from low self-esteem. I know you are a provider and I know you will come through and I know you are a keeper. In the name of Jesus, give God praise this morning.